Here are instructions for casting aluminum using the lost wax process with composite mold used to create the plaster or a composite stone mold. Be warned, the process is dangerous and it's hard. Safety precautions should be followed to prevent accidents and injuries and be sure to use proper ventilation when working with these materials. This process is challenging, so be careful. We're going to start by making a mold of the original object using composite mold and bubble buster. Spray a little bit of bubble buster onto the surface of the part just to reduce surface tension. If necessary, you can also put a little bit of vegetable oil that you can use as the mold release. Put that on before you put the bubble buster on. Then you want to melt the composite mold in the microwave, don't overheat it, and then let it cool a little bit before you pour it over your object. To clarify, I use composite mold flex for the making of this mold, but you can use whatever you use. Composite mold flex is a little bit more flexible so that pulling out the wax should be a little bit easier than using the composite mold original. Let the composite mold cool to solidify or put it in the refrigerator or freezer to cool it even faster. And then you just have to remove it from the mold box and remove the original object from the composite mold. The advantages of composite mold for this part is that you can continually reuse it to make multiple copies of the same part and then when you're ready you can remelt it to make other objects whenever you want to. Now we're making a wax casting of the original object in the composite mold mold. I'm using a soy wax because it has a very low temperature, it's microwavable and it's very easy to use and it's also reusable like the composite mold. If you're going to use a higher temperature wax such as petroleum or beeswax then you might have to chill the composite mold by putting it into the refrigerator or freezer prior to pouring the wax into the composite mold. Let this cool to solidify or again you can put it in the refrigerator or freezer to cool it faster and then remove it from the composite mold mold. To make it easier to pull the wax out of the composite mold without causing any damage to the wax, I'm going to cut a little parting line down the side of it using a knife. I'm using an X-Acto knife, but you can use pretty much any knife you like. This is also the process to use if you wanted to make a two-part mold by cutting the composite mold into two halves. You can make more advanced shapes. I'm actually pulling the composite mold flex a little bit away from the side of the wax so I'm not actually cutting into the wax with my knife. So there's actually a little bit of space between my fingers there that keeps it separated and I just pull it apart. And there is the wax casting of the horse. If we were just making a candle, then we'd be all set. Just add in the wick and we have our candle. So that is the first stage of making a lost wax casting. Now we're going to make a plaster casting of that wax shape that can handle the temperatures necessary to pour in the hot metals. Typically when we make a plaster casting we want as much thickness as possible to the plaster so that's stronger and more durable. But since this is going to be broken apart anyways it can be a little bit more liquidy and we can still get a nice casting from it. When you're pouring in the plaster try to go from the outside around so that you don't push the wax casting to the sides as much as possible or have it float up. I placed a pin on the top of the horse's head so I knew where it was when I was pouring in the plaster to make sure it stayed in place and it also works as a place where I make put a sprue in if necessary so that the hot metal can go through the head and through into another area if necessary. Now we need to melt out the wax from the plaster or composite stone casting so that it's ready to put in the hot metal into it. I put it into the oven. First I put it in at about 350 degrees Fahrenheit, let that melt out most of the wax and then I put it up as high as I could get in the oven which is about 550 degrees Fahrenheit and that was to get out the rest of the wax if there was anything left. Well, the fun part, hot, hot metals. I'm using aluminum from aluminum bread pans. I don't recommend using aluminum cans because they have a lot of contamination in them. 
You can clean them by melting them and cleaning off the contamination, but that'll take a lot of time and I don't recommend it for the first few times you make your metal castings. Aluminum melts at about 660 degrees Celsius or about 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. So this furnace will have to be heated to a little bit above that to make sure everything is melted. Let me just add in another warning here. Hot melted metal is hot. Be careful. It also will create fumes that you don't want to be breathing. After that's melted, I pour into my heated plaster mold of the horse and I pour that in as carefully as possible using tongs and gloves and face shield. After pouring and letting it cool a little bit, I put it in the water to make sure it's all cold. See it's a little hot still with some steam coming off. After it's definitely cold, you do not want to touch it when it's hot. I will break this apart using a hammer and we'll see what it looks like. And there is an aluminum duplicate of the horse. This will have to be sanded and cleaned up to make it shiny and it is ready to go. We can make another one by redoing the plaster casting or we can remelt the composite mold and the wax to make a new shape. I just want to reiterate that this is a challenging process and will take some time to do. Aluminum and hot metals are very challenging to use and you should be very very careful when using them. I also did another shape just because I could. And this is another little shape. This is of a mountain lion. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this was useful. Let me know what questions you have and you can learn more at composimold.com. Have a great time and be careful.